Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Uh, I have a few people here I'd like to introduce. Uh, I am Tom Ross. I'm the president and CEO of Grand River Aseptic Manufacturing. We go by our acronym GRAM, G-R-A-M. And with me today from GRAM are John Wichel, who's our VP of Client Pharmaceutical Services, Steve Knoll, who's our VP of Operations, and Chelsea Keaton is our marketing manager. Just wanted to mention that uh, Chelsea will have a copy of a press release that we issued this morning, which will have our business cards and uh, in our titles and spellings for those of you that need that information. And Chelsea will also have some file footage if you need that too. Uh, we'll be doing a mini tour right after we're done here. So if you need some footage there, you can get that at that point. So let's get started. Um, over the weekend, Johnson & Johnson received emergency use authorization from the FDA for its COVID-19 vaccine. This is, uh, this is great news. It's uh, great news for, you know, for our country, great news for the world, and certainly great news for West Michigan. This vaccine, which was distributed, which, excuse me, this vaccine which was developed, tested, and manufactured in less than one year is a truly amazing accomplishment. It will now be distributed throughout the world and will profoundly impact the world as we know it today. When we opened this facility back in June of 2021, we immediately put our new capacity to work to try to solve this problem. We uh, were able to be selected by Operation Warp Speed in August, and then in uh, September, we had a contract with Johnson & Johnson to provide fill finish services for their vaccine candidate. The facility that we're in today is truly a world-class state-of-the-art pharmaceutical facility. Very proud of the effort that John and Steve led to um, implement the most sophisticated technology in making this a fantastic facility right here in West Michigan. Since that time, our team has grown tremendously. We've added about 125 new positions over the last six months, and we intend to hire another 75 new positions for the remainder of this year. The uh, positions that we're looking for, for those that are interested, are uh, anything from entry level all the way through experienced candidates in management to, to really support the tremendous growth and the additional capacity that we're adding in the near future. I'm also proud to note that Graham is continuing to add that capacity to meet the demand in the, in the marketplace. And we will open a new finishing center later on this spring, 110,000 square feet, and it'll be near the Grand Rapids Airport. We have also announced just recently that we have already purchased additional sophisticated equipment that will arrive here at this facility um, in the first half of next year. All of this investment that we're making is to meet the tremendous growth opportunity for vaccine as well as the pharmaceutical industry. I'd also like to take a moment just to commend the tremendous uh, work that our employees have done we work tirelessly and endlessly on an accelerated timeline to produce a vaccine that meets the same quality and safety standards that we've always upheld. It's really, the team has done amazing work and we are incredibly proud of what they've done and what we've accomplished. And ultimately, this has played a significant role in saving lives. Um, with that, we're going to open the floor to questions. But uh, first of all, I just want to mention again that Steve will be taking us on a little mini tour. And if you uh, have any requests for photos or anything like that, Chelsea can help you. So uh, Steve and John, if you don't mind joining me over here for questions. Come on over here. Tom, you so. talked about the, the speed at which this was developed. You've been in this business. How confident are you in the uh, 
efficacy of this, of this Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine. Yeah, and thank you, Joe. It's been wild, wild, widely reported that the vaccine is 85% effective for severe illnesses and 100% effective for the uh, hospitalization as well as death. It's a highly effective but fantastic product. Beyond the efficacy, what about the, the speed at which it was developed? There's still some that say they're concerned that it was put together too quick, that uh, some of the safeguards weren't all there, even though. Sure. Uh, well, Steve, being our vice president of operations, you want to? Yeah, I mean, all the safeguards, uh, all the gates that any pharma pharmaceutical product has to go through, this pharmaceutical product went through all those same gates, um, all the same testing, all the same validation. Um, it was just done at a more accelerated, uh, at accelerated speed. Um, so I wouldn't have any concern about the safety or efficacy of this vaccine whatsoever. When did you begin producing the vaccine? We, uh, we began manufacturing, uh, we've been planning and developing this since we signed the contract last fall. So uh, we've been manufacturing for, for a few months now and uh, we're continuing to manufacture uh, today and in the future. So how many doses are ready to roll out here today? I think it's been announced publicly that their um, j and is, is distributing approximately four million today. How do you feel? I'm I mean, sorry? Just, uh, just how do you feel being in the midst of a pandemic and being a part of the solution? Uh, it's been, uh, you know, there, when we talk about words like a, an honor, a privilege, and that's truly heartfelt. I mean, the opportunity to really save lives and be part of this, this, uh, this solution is uh, it's something you can only dream of. It's, uh, if I can use the line that Steve used, this is the type of thing you tell your grandkids about when, uh, when you when you get a little bit older and reflect back on what you did in your career, this has been a, an incredible opportunity for us. And then, and frankly, the whole team, we have 350 people now. So the whole team is rallying around that mission. And this mission is, um, when you think of what the government has done to mobilize the, an entire industry to find a vaccine in an incredibly short period of time, it's truly an amazing accomplishment. And for us to be selected, to be part of that, has been a tremendous honor. Sure. Well, I'll let uh, Steve handle that one again, so. Yeah, sure. So the fill finish uh, steps is basically a, a concentrated form of the drug substance is received. And what we do is we will do formulation steps and uh, many different filtration steps followed by sterile filling. And you guys will get a, a peek of what that looks like as we go on the tour a little bit later. But basically, um, there's a lot of uh, upstream and downstream processes before and after all those steps that you know other uh, facilities are doing and the fill finish activities is just a one little uh, bracket that basically Graham has been working on for this vaccine. So is the vaccine itself produced here or is that shipped here and then you guys fill it? The vaccine is produced here and we we do formulation activities uh, some dilution steps some sterilization steps with filters and sterile filling into the vials so what you see in the marketplace as a as a vial with a uh, filled product, that's what we produce here. And Tom, you had mentioned, and you can answer this, either one of you, that there is now a facility out by the airport. Was that all part of this plan? Were there certain dollars up front from J&J &J or through Operation Warp Speed that allowed you to expand? Um, well, we've had great support from Operation Warp Speed, but the uh, new facility that we're uh, building by the airport, that's all funded by Graham. And, uh, and John's actually in charge of that product. He might might be able to. Sure. Yeah, so that's out, like Tom said, that facility is out by the airport. It's approximately 110,000 square feet. Uh, it'll be a, a finishing and warehouse center. Uh, approximately 30,000 square feet of finishing. And when we say finishing, we're talking about visual inspection, labeling, and packaging of the vials, and then cold and frozen storage, as well as normal temperature warehouse storage. And it also has future quality control labs as well for the facility. Talk, you talked about the need for more employees. Does the mission be part of the COVID vaccination effort? Does that help attract more? Do you think it'll help attract? Uh, I'm not sure I heard the question. Did you hear it, Steve? Oh. The, the, the mission? 
Does it help attract employees to the program back then? Is that going to help oh. with the recruitment of new employees? Oh, oh thank you, Joe. Um, yeah, I think that's a great question because, you know, people want to be part of the solution. And what we're doing here is, is something that they, um, they're attracted to. We've been actually very fortunate we've been able to recruit a significant number of people in a short period of time. And, uh, and often one of the biggest reasons they want to join is to be part of this solution. To, uh, and plus the fact that we're growing so quickly. There's a tremendous opportunity for everybody here to learn and to develop and to have a great career. And it's been, uh, it's been actually a surprise that we've been able to hire that many great people in a short period of time. We feel you know, very fortunate in that regard. You said the vaccine was shipping out today, 4 million doses. How soon can Americans expect um, that to be available to them? As early as tomorrow? Do you want to take that one, Steve? So. Yeah, I mean, so just to be clear, the vaccine, we don't ship the finished packaged uh, you know, uh, presentation of the vaccine. We ship the filled vials off-site to another facility, and then those get packaged uh, for distribution. So there, just to be clear, there is no distribution into, to the people from this facility. That's happened at a, that happens at a different facility. Yeah, we, what we've done is um, that we've been manufacturing vac the, the, the vaccine for a while now. And, uh, and we um, shipped that to a facility that J&J &J, uh, manages. And so they manage the distribution, um, the final distribution to the, to the actual vaccine distribution uh, process, which generally goes through, uh, through the government and the government Typically, the national goes to the state, and the state goes to the county. And as you probably agree, what we've all had a vaccine, and hopefully you have too. Um, but that's the way the process works. So we actually manufacture it, and J and J is uh, in charge of that. What facility? Where? Where is the facility that it gets shipped to? Uh, not not able to share that uh, information. There's a lot of security concerns around making sure that the vaccine gets to uh, you know gets to to everyone. So. But all four million came out of this facility. Uh, we've made uh, we made millions of product, but uh, unfortunately, I can't uh, I can't share the information. I guess that's similar to my question: is what percentage of the vaccines have you guys been making here versus at maybe other facilities, or are there other facilities that are doing yeah. what you're doing here? It's uh, another great question. Unfortunately, I can't can't provide that. We are uh, we're providing a lot of vaccine for Johnson and Johnson. You mentioned that all of you have received the vaccine. Yes. Any after effects? Any, what, how did your bodies respond to it? Uh, it was um, very minimal. A little bit of a sore arm, and, uh, and that was about it. It's, uh, it's really, it's a, an incredibly effective vaccine. You know, we, uh, because the Johnson & Johnson Emergency Use Authorization just came this weekend, we actually had another vaccine that we had received. So we had a double dose. But that's one of the things about the, the Johnson & Johnson product, it's a single dose. And that's, uh, and that's critical to be able to get that into the marketplace. So um, we're very excited that they've been able to uh, get that authorization from the FDA. There's talk of a booster potentially for the different variants. Is some of that already in the works? Uh, I, think, I believe Johnson Johnson has indicated publicly that they are in trials for a second, uh, second booster shot, and uh, although we don't know a, a ton about that. Once they get this under control, Tom, do you have any idea how long you're going to be producing the uh, vaccination? Steve? Uh, Steve? Uh, go ahead. Can you repeat that? Yeah. You, you have any idea how long you'll be producing the vaccine once it's under control and everybody gets at least one shot? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I, I know we're going to be making it for all of this year, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, but, you know, a lot of it just depends on, you know, how much is needed and when it's needed, you know, for so long. Mm -hmm. Our, we have a we have a contract with Operation Warp Speed and Johnson and Johnson, and that uh, and that contract extends through the end of 2021, and uh, and potentially beyond that. How confident Sorry, were you? Glasses here, too, <laughs> you know. How confident were you when Operation Warp Speed was first announced? There was a lot of skeptics at the time, a year a little over less than a year ago, that that this could be done in this time frame. Um, I'm sorry, I'm having a little hard time hearing you. I'm sorry. Yeah. How confident when, when Operation Warp Speed was announced and right. they said we're going to have a, a vaccine within a year, how confident at that time were you that that could actually happen? Um, I feel very confident in that the, uh, what Johnson Johnson had done as long as uh, Pfizer and Moderna is, is truly groundbreaking work when you think about 
being able to develop a vaccine in that, uh, that period of time. Just the ability to get a, you know, a clinical trial, we have 30, 40, 50,000 people, is, uh, is difficult in a normal development cycle. But to be able to, to pull that amount of uh, people together in, uh, during the pandemic to, to do the testing of the, cli the clinical trials, um, the way that the country and the farm industry rallied around that, I was highly confident that we'd have a vaccine out this spring, and it's, uh, it's gone even a little bit faster than I might have expected.